A year ago, I shared with you a list of three countries that I would live in if I could only live in three countries. And I've been giving some thought to that list over the last year, and today I'm going to share with you my latest three places where I would live. Hi, I'm Andrew Henderson. This is Nomad Capitalist, where we help seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and investors legally go where you're treated best. More at nomadcapitalist.com. So the ground rules for my original episode, where I talked about the three countries that I would live in, where uh, you can travel between these three countries, but you can't go on vacations. You can't say, hey, I'm living in Singapore, but uh, you know, I'll go to Malaysia when I want. I'll take a weekend trip to Cambodia. I'll go to Japan. Uh, the deal was you've got to stay in these three countries. They are the three places that are going to sustain you. And so you have to choose wisely. Now, if you have three countries that you would choose, do leave a comment below. I want to hear from you. Uh, but my countries back then were Malaysia, uh, was somewhere in Eastern Europe. I talked about Serbia. I talked about Georgia. Uh, I was a little bit unclear on some different places in emerging Europe. And I also mentioned Mexico. Um, and so I've been giving some thought to that. One of the things that I've been uh, focused on in the last several years, uh, and in the last year in particular, is going where people are nice, uh, working to be nicer, working to build better relationships, empowering people on our team, for example, uh, building stronger and, and also some new personal relationships. And I made friends with uh, four new guys, all of whom are super calm, super nice guys. We've had great discussions over the course of the last year. And uh, between talking to them and some of my existing friends and to Mrs. H, they have all really helped me to push me to the next level of focusing on where are you uh, not only treated best, but where are people just nice? I think it's a very powerful thing. And I've come to appreciate that more and more every year that I've been doing this. Uh, I think when you first start traveling, uh, it all seems new. It all seems great. Everyone seems fantastic. But after you do this for a while, uh, especially when that is brought to your attention, niceness becomes important. Uh, and so if I were going to revise the list, I would not have, I would not revise the entire list. I do believe that the trifecta approach that we talk about where you spend uh, one third of your year in three different places works. Uh, it works from a lifestyle perspective. Obviously in this case, you'd want to max it out. You'd want to live in three countries because <laughs> those are the only three countries you get to spend your time in. Uh, but I think that Asia, I think that Europe, of course, and I think that Latin America are the places that uh, for most people you'd want to go. Certainly you could look at Africa, Africa could become emerging, um, but I think Latin America, Europe, and Asia are, are the continents that I would choose. I'm not going to uh, the US, I'm not going to Australia. And so in Asia, I would stick with Malaysia. Uh, certainly you have had in the last year a lot of foreigners who have left Malaysia. Uh, but I still believe that uh, the culture in Malaysia, the people by and large, uh, are simply nice people, are simply kind people. Um, perhaps a little bit different than I am. Uh, I tend to overthink things. I think some people there are just focused on enjoying life and um, you know, have somewhat simple goals at times, which I think is, is great. Obviously, there's also a lot of very successful people there. Um, but I think you've got really just beautiful people. Uh, and I've been all over Southeast Asia. Um, I've spent a lot of time in Thailand. I just don't have the same vibes in Thailand that I have. I love Singapore, uh, but there's something that just doesn't quite click for living there for the rest of my life. Uh, great place to store wealth. But for me, uh, Malaysia is the place. And you've just got these great, um, really nice people. So Malaysia makes the list for me in Asia. Now, uh, we go over to Latin America. Latin America, obviously, a huge region. Um, I have never had such the affinity for Southern South America. I was in Chile. Don't quite get it. Seems, uh, you know, in some ways a little bit too much like a Canada, uh, which there's some good things that make it like that. It is very efficient. Things work. Um, never really got a great vibe in Chile, and I, I think it's probably heading, uh, if it's heading one direction or the other, in the wrong direction. Uh, Argentina, Doug Casey, who spoke at our conference this year, Nomad Capitalist Live, uh, likes Argentina. Uh, could be interesting. Uh, probably wouldn't want to be so far away. Uruguay, not sure that makes the cut. Uh, was in Uruguay recently. It was a lot of red tape. And so, you know, I did say last year Mexico would be my place where I would live. Uh, and I think that I might possibly stand by that. Uh, Mexico has great diversity. 
Uh, I'm a big fan of Mexico City. Uh, a lot of people I'm talking to are interested in Puerto Vallarta, interested in Cabo, interested in um, Merida, interested in Guadalajara and areas around there, Lake Chapala, even Oaxaca. Lots of places in Mexico. That's just scratching the surface. And uh, because I am originally from the United States, I don't like everything about the U.S. Wasn't really my place, but there are certain guilty pleasures that I enjoy. There are certain cultural things that Mexico has perhaps better than anywhere else in the world if you like a certain amount of Mer Americana uh, in terms of food, in terms of service, in terms of a lot, a lot of things. And Mexicans are very nice people. I think by and large uh, in Latin America, uh, people are pretty nice. Uh, but obviously you look at a country like Mexico, it's more international. That's probably going to sustain you for longer. Uh, so Mexico might make the cut, but I'll tell you, as I spend more time in Colombia, now again, I, I said uh, earlier this year that I was happy to be leaving Latin America uh, because after a while I like to go and try something new. Um, it's not about lowering my taxes. Uh, it's not about uh, anything else other than just I like variety. Uh, but as I spend more time in Colombia, it certainly requires a bit more of a grasp of uh, Spanish pronunciations uh, are more misunderstood here than perhaps any other place in Latin America for me. Uh, but, you know, the people in Colombia, when I compare to the rest of Latin America, really some of the kindest people, and I'm saying that both among uh, Colombians that I know in other parts of the world, expats, as well as people who live here in Colombia itself. And so, you know, uh, I have been on a sort of a tour of uh, Colombia this year where I've seen different areas. Um, and so, you know, gotten out of the proverbial capital city, um, perhaps not as developed as parts of Mexico, but very fascinating. Again, really just, you feel great with some of the people, um, you know, seen different cities, you know, so I think either one of those could work. Uh, I'm torn in the sense of Colombia, perhaps a bit more warm, What's interesting, there's, there's perhaps more politeness in Colombia than many parts of Latin America, just in terms of like people swearing, for example. You'll see a lot more of that in Mexico. Uh, again, it has more of that American vibe, whereas in Colombia, it's very like uh, conservative and, uh, and polite, which is nice. And so that would be a difficult toss up for me. Um, but I think that, um, you know, having a certain sense of warmth as you, as you go through the rest of your life, uh, is very important. So uh, I might potentially make a change there. Uh, and it's kind of just comes down to warmth versus lots of things to do. Not that there's distinct differences in terms of uh, the warmth Mexico versus Colombia, but I think Colombia probably wins there. So that would be a toss up. Now, the big change is in Europe. Uh, certainly parts of Eastern Europe have continued to be very open, very free. We've talked about Serbia, we've talked about Albania. Uh, Armenia has been in that category as well. Georgia, not quite as much. Um, you know, even Turkey has been, you know, somewhat open. Uh, and I love all those places. You know, as I, uh, as I continue to travel, as I continue to evolve, as our business continues to grow, um, those places for me, and I have a lot of little mini hubs in uh, emerging Europe, uh, they are just that. They are mini hubs. Um, and I like them and I enjoy spending time there, I don't know going forward that they make the cut, and I'll tell you why. Um, you know, for me, whenever I go, when I went to London for a couple, year, uh, a couple years ago for a couple days, and the dynamic between me and the guy at the cafe was just different. Uh, I remember I said, hey, you know what, I'm gonna get that, that glass bottle of water. He said, you know what, let me just get you a, uh, let me just get you a glass of water. It's, it's free. I don't, I don't know if people buy those bottles of water anyway. And uh, that was just one example that sticks in my head of where you just have these conversations, these everyday conversations, uh, that just seems a little different in um, perhaps the English-speaking world, perhaps in something where you have a native speaking. Uh, for me, as a business owner who spends a lot of time in different places, uh, you know, it's difficult to get to the perfect level where I'm making waiters laugh. Uh, or, you know, I'm telling culturally relevant jokes. And again, even in, like in Latin America, you speak Spanish. What passes as interesting in, in Mexico may not work in Colombia. Uh, the pronunciations may be off or the, or the um, you know, colloquialisms may be off. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's somewhat difficult. I, I think that the English speaking world, because it is kind of the lingua franca of the world, is a little bit, a little bit easier in, to adapt to, whether you're a native speaker or not, in terms of people in different English speaking countries kind of understanding what you're saying. 
um, that creates that sense of warmth because you can have the banter. Um, and so you know, I've always looked back at that. Um, and you know, for that reason, I, I don't want to go to the US. Uh, I think Canadian people are very nice, but I wouldn't choose to go to Canada. Uh, I wouldn't go to Australia. Um, New Zealand never had an appeal, but I'll tell you where I have been going for more than a dozen years that I've really enjoyed, uh, and that's Ireland. Um, every time I've been to Ireland, I've always felt very much uh, at home. I've always felt warm. I've always just really um, felt great. And so um, when I was recently in Ireland, uh, I went with Mrs. H and she said, like, you are, um, this is like the best version of you. This is like you elevated um, because you're just like totally on. Um, the same way that perhaps you're used to seeing me here or, or even better, uh, I just, there's a great feeling there. I've been going many, many, many times over the years and we haven't talked about it a lot. Uh, if you'd like us to hear about it more, there, there certainly are some good incentives there. Uh, do leave a comment. Uh, but I think uh, to have that piece, if you are an English speaker, or if you're not a native speaker of the other places, uh, having an English speaking place might be important. Now, I look back at, um, I don't know, what, what a, dec a dozen years now of traveling from all these emerging markets. I don't regret it for one bit. Um, but, you know, you do it for long enough and you'd like to have some place that has that slice of um, a culture where you're from. You know, I don't consider myself American. I never enjoyed, you know, saying when I go to these countries, especially the Serbias, uh, in countries like that, you know, showing the U.S. passport. Um, it always felt odd. But certainly, you know, coming from Ohio, I do enjoy talking to other people from the Midwest. Uh, we have a number of people from, uh, that we've helped recently from uh, Wisconsin and uh, Indiana, what have you. Always enjoy talking to those people. I think that in Ireland, you have a certain, that kind of sense of humility uh, that comes from the American Midwest that I enjoy. Um, you know, you have just really kind people. And I'll tell you, I was with, um, I was with Mrs. H and we're walking down uh, Grafton Street in Dublin. And uh, within the first 24 hours, I think she heard more sorries of people who bumped into her or she accidentally bumped into them and they still said sorry uh, than she heard in Moscow in her entire life. And, and there's something about that, that um, you know what, uh, you can pay some tax in Ireland. You can get yourself on a relatively favorable plan uh, if you're moving there. Uh, and it may be worth it for a lot of people uh, to have a place uh, like that. Now, I understand that we've, we have a number of people in the audience who are from Ireland and they're tired of it. And I think that's probably true of any country, right? But um, for me, it always felt warm. And that is really one of the themes. You know, we, somebody recently mentioned, you know, Andrew only cares about paying uh, as little tax as possible. And uh, I'll expand on that in another episode. Um, but that's not really the truth. For me, you know, feeling happy, uh, feeling comfortable, that's important. And uh, as I progress, uh, I'm making these little tweaks to where I would spend time. Now, obviously, there is no such restriction. You can only visit three places. And so I will continue to go to places that aren't on the list. But if I had to choose three places, those are where I would choose and why. Uh, because I really think that that sense of warmth, that sense of just radiating happiness, which, by the way, everyone gets to choose where those places are for them. If you're, exp if you're doing this for the first time, uh, I always suggest getting a citizenship, getting a residence permit somewhere you think you'll like. You can always change your mind later, but make it a process of exploration because you want to find out, you know, what makes your proverbial heart sing. Where do you click with? And I can't tell you where to click with. I can tell you statistics. I can tell you, um, you know, what place has this criteria and that criteria. But I think experiencing it for yourself is important. So those are the three countries. I do want to hear your comments. Don't stop now. We've got well over a thousand more videos here on YouTube for you to watch and learn how to go where you're treated best. And if you want to work with Nomad Capitalist personally, go to nomadcapitalist.com apply. Learn about our unique tried and true process, garnered over years of experience, and learn how you can become our client.